Good evening and salutations, my Days of Elias fans. Let's start with Kristen for a minute because this woman... This woman is so damn unhinged, okay? Because she gets to the hospital dressed as um Susan and not even like five minutes in to her whole scene with Marlena and John and um, Chloe... She starts getting it. She starts getting um into it with her. She's getting into it with her, and both of them, Marlena and John, is like, "Yo, listen, this isn't the time. This isn't the place for this. This isn't the time for that. This isn't the place for that. We're here for Brady. We're here to support Brady. What are you doing?" But she's constantly snapping at Chloe, up into the point where you know both of them, you know Marlena and. John is like, yo, listen, why don't you just go and, like, pray in the chapel or something? Just, like, like leave right now, you know what I'm saying? Because you're not, you're not helping the situation. You're making it a lot worse. You know, she's so mad. She's so emotional. She's snapping at Chloe. And I'm just like, sweetheart, you don't want to put him in this bed. Did you not be... I... Sometimes I'm just like, this woman can be as stupid. Like, I would sit there and think that she would be feeling more sad more remorseful of what she's done but instead she's so I don't even have a term for it but she's so focused on Chloe that she can't even see straight so with that being said she goes to the chapel and she listens to because apparently you know she has Sammy's phone now Lucas came to Rafe and was like I need you to sit there and help find my mother and Rafe was like, alright, so what's, what's going on? Is she kidnapped or something like that? Lucas doesn't want to sit there and really give away, like, too much details as far as Kristen and Sammy and stuff like that. So he's like, well, you know, I can't really sit there and tell you everything, but, you know, you just kind of sit there and trust me on this one. I'm like, bro, so you, you're telling me that you want the commissioner to stop dropping what he's doing, to sit there and try to find your mother, which, by the way, I don't think it's been, like, you know, not that it's been, like, 24 hours or whatever, because it's probably... I think it's been like, it hasn't even been like 24 hours yet. She's a grown woman, and you want him to sit there and stop everything what he's doing, but you're going to sit there and give him, what, half-ass information and just tell him, hey, you're just going to have to trust me on this one. No. So with that being said, Lucas leaves. He calls Sammy, which, of course, you know, Kristen hears, you know, the fact that Lucas is like, well, you know, listen, if I don't hear back from you soon, then I'm going to sit there and just tell Rafe everything about Kristen and the whole nine yards. Kristen's like, well, I can't let that happen. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, cool. So what's the body count up to now? What, five, six? What do we got going on? We got we got Sarah. We got Kate for a little bit. Um, you got Sammy. And now you're going to go after Lucas. That's... <laughs> you are just digging yourself into a, the, to just a deeper hole, aren't you, Sweetie? Are you just... You just don't care at this point. You just you're you're just way past not giving a net. Okay, sure, why not? Let's just go all the way. That's literally what she does. Okay, because um, Lucas comes to um. Well, Lucas comes to the Demaris house. I guess he's looking for um. I don't know if he's looking for Philip or if he's looking for Jake. I can't remember which one. But he goes over there, he's looking, and he's calling out people, whatever. And, um, he's like, alright, fine, I just can't do this anymore. I'm just gonna have to sit there and tell the truth. Kristen comes behind him like the goddamn boogeyman, just says, boop, with the fire poker, okay? And just knocks him out. So I was like, great job, Kristen. You just, <laughs> all these charges. You, uh... You just don't give enough, do you? I mean, you you got kidnapping, um, assault. <laughs> I mean, the only thing you don't actually have is a murder yet, but you keep looking at Chloe like you want to kill her. So, you know, I mean, I wouldn't sit there and put it past her. I mean, she did stab Brady's grandfather in the heart. A man that she loves, she stabbed his grandfather in the heart. Nicole Walker. 
wakes up next to Xander, and she is filled with regret. She's filled with regret because of what she did to Eric, the fact that she cheated on Eric with Xander. So she's going on and on and on. She goes in the bathroom. She throws up. Xander's like, well, that's the first time I've ever, ever done that after having sex with me. Or some, some line that he says. So she comes out. And she's like all mad at herself. She's kicking herself. Here's the thing about Xander. Xander is a very interesting character. Because he can either say the worst possible things. Come to light. Or he could be just very um, insightful. Very brutally honest. Xander's the type of life coach that... <laughs> in some ways, you kind of need, okay, because he literally, everything that he said, everything that he was meant to say to Nicole was absolutely true, you know, everything, from the fact that he was like, listen, you wanted, you wanted to have sex with me, you knew exactly what I, who I was, you knew exactly what you wanted, and you shouldn't have to sit there and kick yourself for it. There was a couple of times that Xander made so much sense they even, they even Nicole was like, like, she was just shocked. She was like, she knew that everything that he was saying was right. Especially about the whole Eric part. You know, as far as him wanting to do good and stuff like that. So he has to fly halfway around the world to sit there and do it. He couldn't sit there and pick up a charity to do it in Salem or anything close to that. Like, come on. Um, you know, so basically he was like, listen, he left you. You're human. Things happen. Don't feel guilty about that. You know? And, like I said, I, I had to agree with every single thing that Xander says. This is why I find this character interesting. Because on an episode like this, he is the most insightful person, the most brutally honest person in this episode. But then he'll sit there and say things like in the last couple episodes about the whole Charlie thing. Oh, well, you know, he, he, no one's perfect. What the f so I could just, I never can tell with Xander from day to day whenever he comes on screen and I'm just like, all right, Xander, what do you got for me? Come on. What's going to be today? Is it going to be me insightful, brutally honest, and, and, and very interesting, or is it just going to be, like, completely dickish? I, I just, I don't know which way the tie is going to turn with you. But, um, Chloe, um, Nicole, throughout this scene with Xander, acts like an utter coward because she knows that he's right she knows that he's right about that he's right about Rafe um you know wanting to be wanting to be with Rafe and not even so much as wanting to be with Xander but wanting to be with Rafe and she just denies everything she's like no Eric is a good man I'm a married woman I was like okay so we're gonna go through this list of denial Okay, cool. So I'm going to be on my phone, and when you are done doing whatever it is that you're doing, the whole lying to yourself thing, and you actually want to be honest, I'll start paying attention. I'm going to be honest. I was paying attention more of what Xander was saying than Nicole, because she just acted like a damn coward throughout the entire scene. So that was awesome. Um, but she does wind up running into Rafe. Now, granted, she does the, I don't, I guess we can call it the walk of shame, the stumble of shame at this point. Um, and so that was interesting, so, yeah. Now, Gabby and, um, Jake pretty much just kind of confessed their feelings. Um, and then I guess they play more rounds of mattress tag. It's all fun and games. Xander, I mean, um, Jake is just being completely honest. You know, being with, with Kate was just a way to try to get over, over, um, Gabby. And he loved Gabby the whole time, and he didn't want to hurt. Kate's feelings, okay? He had all that energy. Let's just remember that he had all that energy. So, he had all that energy. Their second round of playing mattress tag. And guess who walks to the door? All battered up. Kate. Kate walks in that door. And honestly, to tell you the truth, she didn't even walk in that door like she was like... I mean, she didn't walk in that door like she was surprised. She walked in that door like she just went three rounds with, like, five different people, okay? She walked in there like, 
Now, <laughs> halfway through their um, love making scene, you know, Jake is like, um, um, you might want to just kind of turn around because, um, their company. So, that's going to be interesting. I'm not going to lie. This episode was actually pretty good. Um, and when John goes into the room, because Brady's going to be fine because, you know, he's Brady. Um, Brady tells John that, you know, Kristen isn't in prison anymore. So now, the walls are closing in on Kristen. What is she going to do at this point? Well, I guess pretty much the only thing that she can do is probably just leave town again. So she's going to be on the run again. Um, <laughs> uh, so yes, I think that's about it, more or less. Um, oh yeah, Sammy was not there banging at the door like she was going to actually be able to open it. I just thought that whole scene pretty funny, you know. She didn't even get tied up or anything. She was just on the floor. Then when she gets up, well, she knocks at the... She, she starts pulling open the door like... I was just like, what what happened? You thought you were just going to just open the door and just walk on out? Because Kristen went through all that trouble so you could just walk on out? So they are watching this one like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. She gets to the door. She tries to open it like an idiot. Okay, that doesn't work. She starts banging on the door like an idiot because that's going to work. Then she starts yelling. I'm just like, I guess when she's done, I'll probably start watching her again. Um, but yeah, Lucas got thrown into the cell, so um, body count just keeps on rising with Kristen. I got to sit there and say that at least keep, Kristen keeps it interesting. Yes, she's kind of an idiot, somewhat smart, but kind of an idiot, because even with her best laid plan, she ruins it for herself. Um, I mean, she pretty much started with Sarah, and just everything, everything at that point just went downhill, okay, because she had to be Sarah, then she had to be Kate, she had to be Susan, it's just like, sweetheart, you're wearing too many hats, you're trying to juggle too many stuff or whatever like but she makes it interesting so I give her that I, I give Kristen the fact that she does make it interesting um I know someone in the comment section was talking about how I think it was Patrick TV I think um was talking about in the comment section how she are you know assuming it's a she but it could be he point is that person was not just saying they didn't like boring characters no one likes boring characters but there's a way to spice up the show the right way, then there's Chanel, which is an entirely different subject. And unfortunately, I know at some point throughout this week, I'm going to have to sit there and unfortunately see her. And man, I hope it's not tomorrow, because tomorrow seems like it's going to be a good episode. And I hope we follow through. So with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank everyone for watching. Be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Catch you in the next video.